The Bluebird has a problem. The heater is cold, horribly cold. Um, so what can I do about it? Well, I've decided to put my faith in 65p cola. Will that clear the matrix? Let's give it a go. Right, first of all, let's try a back flush just to see if any more silted, awful muck comes out. That's running pretty clear, to be fair. Oh, I've got a mucky lens. All that water flying around. Right. I've bunged up the bottom of the matrix. I've got this pipe adjusted so I can pour some cola in. And look at that. It's all a bit unpleasant in that hose. I could really do replacing the hoses. But, alas, I'm probably not going to do that. Time to put my faith in Coca-Cola. Not that actual brand. I don't know if you can hear that, you probably can't because the lawnmower has just tied up, but we've now got about that much coke bubbling away inside the heater matrix. And uh, I'm going to leave that overnight and we'll see what we find in the morning. Oh, maybe not fill that hose entirely. There we go. So if you look at the instructions here and um, we've got carrot. Oh, let's zoom out and zoom in again. Come on phone, you can do this. Ah, there we go. If we look at the ingredients, you can see phosphoric acid is one of the things. And um, I remember as a child putting copper coins in little bowls of coke and um, it cleans them right up. And that's what I'm hoping this is going to do to the heater matrix. I'm thinking the bubbles probably can't hurt. It might agitate some of the silt out. Well, we'll leave that sitting and see what it does. Um, certainly I'd rather pour coke into my... Um, Nissan Bluebird's cooling system than drink the stuff. Um, if it can strip chemicals from metals, it makes you wonder what it's doing to your insides. Certainly you can um, make quite a mess of your own teeth. So I shall not drink the stuff, I shall merely use it as a descaling agent. Let's see if that has any effect at all. Well it's now the morning after and um, I skillfully plugged my pipe with a spark plug um, mostly to try and stop the flies. Um, using coke with sugar in it, unsurprisingly, attracts quite a lot of flies. Um, that maybe isn't something I foresaw. I was careful to wash away any spilt coke uh, before I put the car away last night. Not that I put it away, but you know, put the bonnet down and left it. Um, so now I'm going to blast out the coke and we'll see if it's made any difference at all. Well, here we are again. We've got the temperature showing, um, yeah, there's the camera. Uh, fairly normal and um, that, that, that does actually feel warm um, I think I've still got bubbles in the heater matrix as well you can hear them and that's got hotter again I think the only thing that remains is to go for a test drive right, so here we are then we're out on the road uh, the heater is still, I'd say that's hot, but um, we'll get her up to speed and see how she does. If this has worked, I'm going to have to rethink my thoughts on Coca-Cola. Other brands are available. In fact, I used a co-op brand. But I think all the problems I'm having with the cooling system on this car relate to the fact that the head gasket had clearly failed and it was driven around in that state with the cooling system just getting worse and worse and worse until finally the car cried enough and just started hurling coolant out. So yeah let's um, go for a bit of a run because I've managed to get the heater lukewarm before now but as soon as I've gone for a drive it's cooled down. It's not the coldest day today so perhaps it's not the best test but we'll see. I can still hear bubbles bubbling around in the heater system, but I mean that, that is hot and that is encouraging. It hasn't been a great test of the Evans waterless coolant unfortunately, um, because most of it fell out and I don't think I've got enough to refill the system again. But of course what it has highlighted is that if you do have a coolant leak and old cars 
do have coolant leaks. Um, yeah, your coolant falls out. And if you haven't got any Evans coolant to hand, you have to fill it with water, which means you've corrupted the cooling system. So I think on that basis, I'm going to have to declare that the Evans waterless coolant was not a success for me personally. Perhaps if you were building the car up, um, a proper restoration and you're replacing all the hoses so you, you've got some faith it's not going to spring a leak it might be all right but of course i've been chasing issues through this car's cooling system since i got it back on the road and i've done uh, about 1300 miles since it got back on the road now so um that's not without some success despite the fact that my videos might show it failing uh, it has managed to not break down for most of those 1300 miles but yeah, I've just shut the window and um, that is still toasty warm. I'm going to put the heater on full blast. See if it can hold temperature. Yeah, you'd still say that was acceptable. And it's interesting, when um, I had the car on an angle, so the red cap was the highest point in the system, uh, there were lots of bits floating around, so I think the coke has done its job and um, I sort of gave the hoses a squirt which sort of effectively puked all those bits out with the cooler. Yeah, that's still toasty warm. So hopefully, I'm going to shut that off now because it's roasted in it. Hopefully we can now say the cooling system is okay. Um, time will tell, of course. Um, I'm kind of toying with the idea of tomorrow taking this car all the way to Sussex uh, then on to Margate in Kent which is about as far east as you can get and um, and then coming home in it it's going to be a trip of over 700 miles and there's a bit of me that wants to use the Honda because the Honda's just been so reliable but is it time to have faith in the Bluebird or should I wait until I've got all the hoses replaced Oh, I should say one other issue with the Bluebird is the thrust bearings getting very noisy on the clutch. You can hear it just chirp away there as I slipped it. So um, I do have a clutch kit on the way, which is going to be yet more expense. Uh, I've spent 40 quid on a clutch on eBay. I'm, no, I don't learn, do I? Cheap stuff on eBay. I'm hoping it's the right one. I think I'm probably going to get the local garage to fit it because it involves removing drive shafts and the gearbox and all that and I can't be bothered I'm too busy so yeah we'll add that to the to-do list to continue the positive bluebird vibe it really is getting better and better to drive now um, the uh, KYB dampers have made a huge difference to this car um, I've got much more confidence in it going around bends um, because the new dampers seem to control the body roll better as well and um, yeah, I can corner in it much more quickly, much more satisfyingly than I can the Honda. The Honda just doesn't like going around bends. The blockly tyres I've got on test at the moment um, certainly look the part, nice chunky sidewall. Um, they're 18570R14s, um, slightly wider than the 165 um, of an 80 profile it would have worn from new. But I thought, given the way I drive, a bit more width probably isn't going to hurt. And um, I have had a few issues with those tyres in the wet. Um, they're not... They don't fill me with masses of confidence. I've, I've found on really sodden wet roundabouts, the front end is pushing out if I start getting a bit too aggressive with it. I mean, granted, not many people are going to get aggressive with a Nissan Bluebird. But it's that and the fact that I've had the front wheels lock up a couple of times um, having to do quick stops once was a deliberate attempt just to see where the grip level was and uh, the second time was because I encountered two trucks stopped around a blind bend because the drivers were having a chat thanks lads um, I had to employ a little cadence braking to ensure I didn't smash into the back of them and again it had been absolutely pouring it down so the road was sodden but I think these tyres are quite hard the, the sidewalls are notably stiffer than on, say, the Honda's um, Nokian all-weather tyres, which are so soft they mostly look flat a lot of the time. Uh, so, yeah, 
Testing continues. Uh, how long is that clutch going to last? And um, yeah, we'll, 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 as, as the tyres bed in a bit, we'll, we'll continue to see how they get on. But yes, driving around the beautiful roads of Wales on a sunny day like today, this bluebird's not a bad old bird, you know. Um, it's quite pleasant with the sunroof back and uh, the road awaiting. I mean, sure, the steering's a bit numb, but nowhere near as bad as the Honda. And it's not a driver's car, perhaps, but you can drive it quickly and enjoyably. So there you go, that's a positive spin on the Bluebird. Um, thank you for watching this video. Let's hope all continues to go well. And I shall see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, then you'll be told whenever one of my new videos goes live. And Facebook likes me to have lots of subscribers. So if you do that, that'd be grand. And why not give the videos a share on social media if you like what I'm doing? Perhaps other people will like it too. So do tell your friends. But you watch a strange beardy man on the internet talk boring rubbish about cars. More of that next time. Farewell.